let's talk about trade copiers and what are the benefits of using a trade copier as an algorithmic trader. You're gonna find out in this video and I actually use it for a different reason than most common traders use it. I think what comes first to mind when it comes to trade copiers is obviously with prop firms um, and that's not what I use it for, but uh, that can be a benefit. So first of all, what is a trade copier? I know most of you probably know what it is, but essentially it allows you to have you know a master account and then multiple slave or child accounts thereafter and it allows you to copy your trades from one account to multiple right so uh, if you have a signal right and you have multiple accounts you can copy that signal to those accounts instead of you know having the signal operate on many other accounts okay this is used um, in a lot of common applications uh, you know a lot of funds or firms have this type where they're, they're copying trades to multiple um, you know, single managed accounts instead of a, a big pool. So that type of technology is used there. Obviously, it's also very common with prop firms where uh, if you wanna buy uh, 20 accounts or 10 accounts and you wanna copy them all to one account instead of you know running 20 unique strategies, you can do that as well. Uh, but yeah, lots of benefits in terms of scalability. So I'm gonna be showing you my trade copier that I built. Uh, we built it from scratch in our Coding Great Trading Bots group and how I use it. So I'm gonna pop on to my live server here. And I actually have three trade copiers because I have three different portfolios, four actually, because I have a Bitcoin one too. But if I edit uh, one of these trade copiers here, you can see uh, we have a paper account name. So this would be the master account and then a live account name, and that's the live account. Uh, there's a delay option, so I can actually delay how long the order will take in terms of seconds. Uh, the reason why I have this delay, I know you may be asking, hey, that, Jacob, doesn't speed matter? Like the faster you get into trade, the better. If you have a high frequency strategy, absolutely. But if your holding time is hours to days, it doesn't matter so much. But the reason why I have the delay is that sometimes, very rarely, uh, when the markets get very volatile, this is specifically on the futures market, so the CME and CBOT, when they get very volatile, sometimes your orders may get rejected. Even if you submit a market order, which is supposed to get filled at the next price, not necessarily the best price, just the last price. When it's very volatile, the CME can reject your order. So especially on news events at say 8.30 a.m., 10 a.m. Eastern, when usually CPI, PPI, that type of, of you know, information is released, there's a flurry of orders. And if you try and submit a market order during that time period, you may get rejected. So Simply adding the delay has been able to fix that, um, waiting three or four seconds. It used to be 10 seconds. I found my slippage, which means the difference between um, the simulation fill and the live fill was getting a little bit too great. So I have lowered it to three seconds and still I don't have the issue with the, the flurry of orders. So yes, my orders do get filled three seconds later, but so far I've been tracking the slippage uh, on a simple Google sheet and it's it's been negligible. So not a huge issue. So you can set the delay. Um, you can say trade micros if you want to. So you check that, then it will submit micro orders instead of mini orders. Um, you can override the quantity. So I'm, I'm trading four contracts right now. And that will copy any trades from SIM 101 to my live account, okay? Uh, I also, this delay is also attached to the data series. So if it's three and I want it to be three seconds, then I, I need to make sure that the data series is set to second as well. Uh, and this is a custom trade copier we, we copied. Uh, you can buy a trade copier, or this is a custom trade copier we developed uh, in our community. Uh, you can buy trade copiers as well, uh, but we made this one ourselves for some customization. So with this setup, if this strategy is enabled, so if I can enable it here, then any of these systems on running on Sim 101 will be copied to live. I have other trade copiers here. They do the same thing. The only difference is Bitcoin. I have a Bitcoin trade copier. Bitcoin has a very high margin requirement. So uh, we only trade one contract on this, um, but you can see that the SIM account is different. It, it copies from SIM Bitcoin to the live account. And then we have a, a full size Bitcoin strategy running right here. Uh, yeah, that's, that's how it works. Um, the source code is pretty easy. Pretty much it's, it's copying uh, we'll do a little, I already have it open here. Basically it just copies the order 
to a live account, uh, listens on uh, execution on the paper account, and then copies to the live account. And it's, it's just a market order. Um, profit targets and stop losses all sit on the SIM accounts, but when they're filled, it'll just do a market order on the live account. So we guarantee the, the execution on the live account. Uh, you could copy limit orders and stop orders to your live accounts, but then you have to worry about canceling them and it's a little bit more work. Anyways, um, yeah, we built that in our community and why the, the reason for this video is why do I use it, right? Jacob, why do you use it? Why don't you just run strategies directly on your live account? Well, I told you about the delay thing. Sometimes you get order rejects uh, specifically with intraday strategies. So that delay thing has helped me uh, fix that issue essentially. But the main reason why I do it is I like to track my slippage, right? I like to track, hey, what did I get filled on the simulation account, which is essentially whatever the last price is with no slippage. And what did I get filled on my live account, right? And then I can track the difference in fill prices and see, hey, am I getting negative or positive slippage, right? I can track, all right, on ES, on the sim account, we got filled at 6,200 uh, on a long trade. And oh, on our live account on ES, we got filled three seconds later at 6201, right? So we got filled one point worse on a long trade. Uh, that's the main reason why I use that. And I can track my slippage and then I can make, you know, modifications. Hey, I noticed my slippage is, is too high. Maybe I need to lower the delay, right? Maybe instead of three seconds, I need to do two seconds. It allows me to track slippage. And at the end of the month, I can see how much slippage I made or lost for um, that, that period. So that's the main reason why I use, um, trade copiers. Um, and it's, it's very beneficial for that perspective. I also like that I only need to change settings on sizing. So if I do want to size up, I can just edit one of my trade copiers and change my multiplier value instead of going into each strategy and changing it, you know, 10 times. So you can see I'm running quite a bit of strategies. These ones I'm not running. So anything in sim disabled, I've turned off. Uh, but you can see I'm running many, many strategies. So you can see that would take a while where now I just need to edit the, the trade copier itself. So that's the main reason why um, I use trade copiers to, to monitor slippage. Most of you watching, uh, at least in the real retail space, know that you know you can do a trade copier on prop from accounts. So if you buy 20 accounts, uh, you can copy your trades to, to all 20. And uh, there's some, I think most prop firms have their own trade copier or you can uh, purchase a third party one. I recommend you, you kind of develop it yourself if you can, because you have more, you have more control on what happens. Like the delay thing I like, I like to add, uh, maybe you want to add more features. Like one thing I like to add to the trade copier is submitting near like a VWAP. So when the signal sets, when the signal hits, um, don't enter right away, wait until you're kind of near a VWAP so you get less slippage or there's more volume. If there's more vo volume around a price, you'll get a, or less slippage, right? So that's one thing I wanted to, to work on as well. Uh, the downside of the trade copier, uh, you can't really back test it because it's just copying orders. So if you wanted to back test, say that VWAP issue or that VWAP uh, feature, you'd have to recode that VWAP feature in a, in a strategy you want to back test. So you can't really back test the trade copier. Um, but honestly, the, the net positives definitely outweigh uh, the negatives for a trade copier. And uh, I recommend using one for sure and making your own. If you wanna learn how to make your own, once again, we have a trade copier in our community. You can see the links in the description below, code algotrading.com. Uh, we have a full lesson on how to make a trade copier. And then we also provide the full source code for our trade copier. And many of our members use it as well as myself. I always try and build stuff that I actually use and not just to you know give away. So um, I use this trade copier on a daily basis. So anyways, that's why I use trade copiers. Those are the benefits. Let me know in the description below uh, or the comments below if you use trade copier, if you use a trade copier. I know some other platforms like TradeStation, I don't think you can really run a, a trade copier just due to the platform restrictions. Uh, Quant Connect as well. But uh, you know, there's actually some brokerages too that do have their own copier service, like I think Interactor Brokers, you can copy to multiple accounts um, through their, through simply their settings. So that would be a little bit easier. But um, yeah, let me know if you use a trade copier below and I uh, hope you found value in this video. We'll see you next week, guys. Bye-bye.